right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, the latest physique update from none other than Phil Heath. So he posted this update where he's training at Panada headquarters in Italy. He says this was from a week ago, so about three weeks out from the Olympia. Now, obviously, we know that Phil's not competing in the Olympia. He's doing the commentary for this year's Mr. Olympia. But honestly, I was really surprised to see just how impressive Phil really looked here. I I was surprised at how big he was, quite frankly. I wasn't I know that he's in good shape. I know that he's still holding on to muscle, but I was actually surprised to see, you know, especially in these most muscular shots, how big Phil really still is for being a guy that hasn't competed in what, like three years? And granted, it's totally possible that Phil just wants to hold on to some muscle, look really good, still maintain the image of a bodybuilder, still live the lifestyle to some extent. And maybe that's why he's holding on to the size, but still in the back of my mind, I kind of feel like at his age, in his early 40s, there might be some kind of deeper motivation to staying as big as he is. Because like I said, he doesn't just look good here. He looks really big even compared to most current pros. I mean, if you saw a most muscular, maybe further out from the Olympia, but if you saw a most muscular that looked this big and this good from a lot of guys that are currently top 10 Olympians, you would be impressed. So the fact that Phil still looks this good is really pretty amazing to me. And I know that at this point, it seems pretty unlikely that Phil would make a comeback to compete just based on his age, based on the amount of years that he's been away. But you can't help but look at this physique update and the size that he still has and wonder if it's in the back of his mind that someday he would come back. Maybe, again, maybe not the Olympia, maybe the Arnold Classic, maybe the Arnold UK. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to include it in this video because I thought it was a surprisingly impressive update from Phil at three weeks out from the 2023 Mr. Olympia. And it's entirely possible that he just wants to look really good for his commentary gig. I mean, that's, that's possible as well. But as a diehard bodybuilding fan myself, I still hold on to that little bit of hope that we might see the seven-time champ come back and compete again um, and show these guys why he was so good. Now, next up in the news, we got a little bit of a warning shot from Hadi Chupin directed at the other competitors at the Olympia. This was pretty impressive, I think. So the caption of this post says, look at the eight weeks out video and then stay silent until we meet on stage again. And I've got to say, this is a pretty effective warning shot, because if you really consider the fact that this was taken at eight weeks out, have we really seen anybody else in that top 10 at eight, let alone, you know, at eight weeks out, let alone right now, look as conditioned, as detailed, as hard as Hadi Chupin looks in this video. Honestly, at eight weeks out, he looks more conditioned than most of the guys that are top guys at the Olympia right now at two weeks out, less than two weeks out now. That's just the fact of the matter. And I saw some comments saying, well, maybe he peaked too soon. He looks too good at eight weeks out. But what we know about Hadi is he's one of the most consistent bodybuilders in this lineup. We know that time and time again, he nails that conditioning. So I'm leaning more towards no, he didn't peak too soon. He knows how to peak. He's very consistent. He's always in shape. I don't think it's a matter of him peaking too soon. I think it's just a matter of this is what a really well-conditioned, well-seasoned champion looks like that's about to defend his title for the very first time. And I think he's going to give these guys a serious run for their money. And it's not going to be easy for any of them if they want to stop him. And I think that really what he's displaying here, this crazy conditioning, is going to be the main deciding factor between the guys that are really pushing him and him. Derek Lunsford, I think the main deciding factor was how crazy Hottie's conditioning was compared to Derek's. Samson Dowda, we haven't seen Samson reach this level of conditioning that Hottie has. Nick Walker, a little bit less so because he has come in with really good conditioning, comparable, I would say, um, to Hottie Chupin. But I think a lot of people really discount the importance of conditioning here. And I think they discount how big of a deciding factor it really was in Hottie's victory last year. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Will Hottie Chupin successfully defend and retain his title this year, or will we have a new champion? And if so, who? Now, next up in the news, the Olympia slash IFBB made a very interesting announcement yesterday about the qualification process for the Olympia going forward. And I do think this was a pretty important and pretty significant update. So another step towards making it harder to qualify for the Olympia this time. So the first announcement was last year where they, they took away the point standings. You can't qualify for the Olympia on points. You had to win a show to get there, which I think was a very good move. And I think played a big part in reducing the number of guys that we have qualified this year by almost a dozen. There's almost a dozen less guys this year than there were last year. Actually, it might be exactly a dozen. But anyway, so that was the first step. Now, this time, the announcement was that the top five will no longer qualify for the next year's Olympia. Only the top three. 
Now, I don't think the incentive this time around was to reduce the number of competitors at the Olympia or to necessarily make it harder to qualify. I think the main reasoning behind this was to increase the star power at some of the other shows that we have throughout the year that are Olympia qualifiers. I mean, there were a lot of complaints this year about lack of depth in a lot of these pro show lineups. And it is true in many cases that a lot of times when someone cracks that top five, they don't compete the rest of the year because they want to focus on improving their placing and trying to win the Olympia so they can focus only on the Olympia and not have to worry about competing again throughout the year or qualifying. So I think what this does is it really makes that top three much more coveted because the fact that it is a really big advantage to be able to shut it down for the rest of the year and only focus on the Olympia. So the guys that place top three will have an advantage over the guys that are fourth and fifth because they can focus only on getting better, only on peaking for the Olympia, no distractions throughout the year. But the fourth and fifth place guys will no longer have that luxury, and I do think it will increase the star power across the board at some of these other shows, especially maybe the Arnold Classic. And that's one big reason I take my hat off to Nick Walker for competing in the Arnold last year, or this year rather, because he didn't have to. He was already qualified from the Olympian. If you think about it, he was the only top five guy that competed. I mean, Sampson was sixth at the 2022 Olympia, and he won the Arnold and competed there, obviously. But of that top five, Rami, Brandon, Nick, Derek, and Hottie, Nick is the only one of that top five that competed in any other show throughout the year. And I got to take my hat off to him for that. You don't typically see that because Nick was set. He was ready to just focus on the Olympia. So I think that's impressive. And now this announcement will basically force more people to do that, even though it's only two additional guys. And I think that's good. I think the guys that place in the top spots have every right to just take the rest of the year off and focus on the Olympia if that's what they want to do. But I do think it's a really good thing for the fans. And it's really exciting when they don't take that year off and you see them do one show or maybe more than one show. That's not the Olympia. It really gives the fans a real treat that they don't usually get to see. So shout out to Nick for being the only guy that did that in this past year. Now, next up in the news, we got a pretty important update from Ramon Dino. Even though you can't see much of his physique in this latest YouTube video, you can see that he's at a gym called Kissimmee Muscle. So he's in Kissimmee, Florida. He is in the States. So over the past few days, there's been a lot of conversation about these guys struggling to get to the Olympia, a lot of visas being denied. And I was seeing, especially on the female side, a lot of female Olympia competitors specifically from Brazil were being denied visas. So I heard a little bit of talk about maybe Ramon would have an issue, but I'm happy to report that he is here in the States and he is going to be able to compete. And again, it was just some rumor rumbling that I heard. But then once I started to see a lot of these girls that are qualified for the Olympia being denied visas from Brazil, then I started to feel like where there's smoke, there's fire and there might be a little bit more merit to it. But I also wanted to point out, I also noticed this. Everybody talks about the insanely dedicated fan base that Ramon has. And I think this YouTube video is a perfect example of that. He has less than 10,000 views on this video. It was only uploaded 40 minutes ago at the time that I was recording this. And with 10,000 views, well, 9,500, he has over 5,000 likes on that video with less than 10,000 views. So one of every two people that clicked that video, clicked the like button in the first hour. And that is like an unheard of ratio to have less than 10,000 views and over 5,000 likes. So that just goes to show what a dedicated, impressive fan base Ramon really does have. Having an almost 50, more than 50% like to view ratio is like unheard of on anybody's channel across YouTube. It's a very, very rare phenomenon that that happens. So I was impressed by that. And I just wanted to point that out in this video. The Brazilian fans, man, they're really holding up and promoting and supporting bodybuilding, and they're really out there acting on it. Now, the final story that I've got for you guys today, because I want to make this a little bit of a shorter video. I'm sure you guys can tell with my voice. I tested positive today for COVID, and I feel like I got hit by a truck, and my throat is like raw, sore. So obviously, horrible timing, two weeks, less than two weeks before the Olympia. So I'm trying to save my voice a little bit just in case this thing lasts into next week, which would suck. And I've had it once before and I was fine, but I absolutely feel drained this time. But the final story, an update from Nick Walker, where I thought the caption was interesting. He poses a little bit at the end and he says, conditioning really isn't an issue. So I wanted to round out the video with that because I feel like that was kind of a response to the Hottie Chupin post yesterday, showing how good he looked at eight weeks out. Nick being one of the contenders, a top three guy, runner up at the Arnold. And like I've said many times about Nick, if I remove myself from doing any commentary just as a pure bodybuilding fan as a guy just watching this that loves bodybuilding nick is one of my favorite bodybuilders that's competing 
He's a young guy. He's hungry. He's motivated. A ton of muscle. Pretty consistent with his conditioning. He works hard. He's confident. And that's just really everything that you like to see from a bodybuilder, a guy that you can relate to, a younger guy that's just very driven and is delivering upon the things that he says he's going to do. So I like when you have a guy that says, I'm going to win this show, I'm going to win that show, and then he does it. Now he's saying, I'm going to be Mr. Olympia one day. It makes you believe him. And again, I wanted to give extra props to Nick because with that announcement today about the, uh, the top three qualifying, even though Nick's a top three guy, he might not even have to worry about that. He is the only guy from the top five last year that did another show, and I think that is commendable. So shout out to Nick. Um, that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification icon if you don't want to miss a second of the Olympia coverage. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram, at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.